By show of hands, who here has been on a field trip? Who would consider this a field trip? Yeah, it's the weekend, it gets confusing, I understand that. <laughs> I had the privilege of being a member on a field trip with a group of high school students and university students. And it was one of those trips where it wasn't just out for the day, it was a week. And this was from a university in Ontario and we loaded a bus to head to New Orleans to do one of those amazing Habitat for Humanity trips to help with some Hurricane Katrina relief efforts. And so we go there thinking, oh, I get it, I get it. So we're going to go build a house. That's awesome. I can't build a house, but that's awesome. Students were all pumped up. Whether they were in high school or in university or college, they were just stoked about the fact that they were going to be on a bus for 24 hours, and when that bus arrived, they would begin the trip. Now, in my role, I was a little bit nervous because I was apparently one of the team leaders. And that title holds a lot of weight, leader. That means I had to hold on to the finder. And I had all the information, all the names, had to make sure I did the head count each time we went different places. And we thought the build would begin relatively soon. Go to a home, start putting up walls, putting down plywood floor, maybe digging ditches, whatever we needed to do. But the first day was actually just a fun little team building exercise. Hands up if you like team building. Half of you, cool, nice. And that exercise was just a fun event throughout the city of New Orleans, where we got to do this haunted walk. And in the center of the city, there's this place known as the French Quarter. So we decided to make that our meetup point. After the tour, we'd all go to this cafe on the corner of the French Quarter, and we'd meet up there to do the count off, make sure we're all accounted for. And when we got to the cafe, I noticed that all around the French Quarter, there were artists. There were people painting in the far corner. There was somebody playing some music in the center. There were people dancing off to the side. It was probably one of the most artistic hubs I had ever seen. And if you've never been to New Orleans, that place oozes art. So on our corner at that cafe, there were two buskers, two musicians playing entertaining, sharing their talents with whoever chose to walk by. There was a guitar player, and there was a violinist. The guitar player was sitting on a little chair, and the violinist, she was this petite woman sort of propped up on this short concrete pillar, leaning back to play. And I love music, and I knew these students quite well at this point, because we've been on a bus for a day. That brings you together. And they knew that I liked to play guitar a little bit. So I was just enthralled by these two musicians, watching them make music. And it was beautiful music. It sounded so good. And there was a man next to these two musicians. He had a hoodie on, a lot of Mardi Gras beads. He was holding a beverage in his hand. He had a toque, some shaggy hair. And he's like, music is what makes this place come alive. It was provocative, I felt it. And I had the binder, because that's what I was to do as a leader, make sure people were safe, accounted for, counting them off. But the students encouraged me to play something. Blake, play something. I don't know, I'll get the binder, you know, I gotta count, no, it's cool. Play something, no, <laughs> binder. And you know when there's people who encourage you to do something that secretly you do want to do, but you act as if it's like, no, I don't want to do that. It was one of those moments. I'm like, no. But in my mind, I'm like, please. And then something happened. The guitarist, she picked up her guitar and held it out to me like this. Uh-huh, pretty guitar. No, play something. No, 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 it's, it's cool, I, I have a binder, I'm a leader, I don't play, I'm supposed to be doing leadership. The students can have fun, but not me. Come on, have you ever played guitar in New Orleans? Uh-huh, I played in my basement. Well here, 
pick it up. Have you ever played with a violinist? Never. Please. And the gentleman off to the side with his beverage, play the music, man. Like, is this guy from a movie? He was like, my conscience just sort of speaking to me. And so I put on the guitar. That was not mine. I'm sitting in New Orleans looking at my team of students. And I decided to take a seat where the guitar player had been sitting to play her music. The violinist asks, what would you like to play? I have no idea. Well, do you know how to play? A little bit. I'll just play some chords, and you play something beautiful. <laughs> OK. So that was the plan. That was the rehearsal. And I just started to muster up some basic chords to make it look like I knew what I was doing. I was sitting there, hoping the violinist thought that this sounded kind of legit. And with the aid of this cool guitar pedal, I can now take on the role of that violinist. And so the violinist brings in these simple, beautiful notes. I felt kind of bad because I was the leader. I was supposed to look at the binder, and here I was playing music. We hadn't even started building yet. How did that make sense? It was this moment of self-discovery, but I felt selfish. And the week went on, and we did the building. Some of us would put up walls. Some of us would put up trusses for the roof. Some of us were just raking, digging, helping on the sidelines, because that's just as important. And some of us had hoped that we would have the opportunity to do a building day with the homeowner, the person who would soon live there. We didn't get to, though, but that was okay. And on the last day of the building, we took the bus to the different sites to pick up our teammates. And then there were the high school students, the last team to finish their build. And when they loaded the bus, they were like, guys, 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 can, can you just like hop off the bus for like one minute so we can show you? Today we got to build with the homeowner. It was awesome. We got to talk to them. We got to hear their story. It was so cool. So naturally we got off the bus and we went to see what they had worked on that day. And when I was standing there, didn't have the binder, I looked at the build site, saw some commotion, and there was one person in the distance. And I was floored. Because in that moment, it all sort of came together. Because that's just the way the world works when you try to connect some dots. The homeowner happens to be the violinist. I still can't explain what the heck happened. But all I know is that it was some bigger force doing its thing. And for us, as a group of students, in that moment, we realized that when you put yourself out there, initially, maybe you don't know the bigger purpose. But in the end, it's all supposed to happen. So this room today, not just a series of speakers. It's not just some chit chat on the break. By you putting yourself out there and making some form of a discovery today, weeks, months, years from now, something will take place merely because you stepped a little bit outside your comfort zone while you were here. 
So welcome to TEDx Youth at Toronto. Today, we all get to discover.